Thank you very much for that introduction. <laughs> Thank you. All right. A couple of months ago, I gave an interview. I've been giving some interviews. And I spoke passionately about many topics. I felt it was an interesting interview. In fact, I'm very passionate about education. So I took my time to explain what I think about the Ghanaian education system and the training of engineers in Ghana. After I finished, a few weeks later, or some time later, I saw a publication on social media summarizing the things I had talked about. And this was very, very interesting. The journalist had done a good job. And what he said I had said about education in Ghana was that we have an education system which does not produce what we want. And yet, we are uninterested or unable to get it to produce what we want. This is paraphrased. And so we wind up producing engineers who don't engineer. And in fact, are not expected to engineer if, because if per chance they did engineer, nobody would be interested in their engineering. I felt that was very interesting. I was reflected on it, and I thought about it, and I wondered whether it was a misrepresentation or that was actually what I said. And I came to the conclusion that, yes, truly, it is what I said, except that it was not complete. I had taken my time to explain why I said those things, and I had actually talked about ways in which we might address this issue, but that didn't appear. So I'm going to use this opportunity to delve a little bit more into that, to talk about the issues we have with education, and particularly engineering education, and then to propose some bold steps we might take together to change what we have. All right, so this is where I'm coming from. So let's start gently. What is engineering? <laughs> Engineering is simply the application of science, mathematics, and technology to address real-life problems. In many parts of the world, the parts that we recognize as developed, engineers have a lot of work to do. They spend time looking at the systems and the communities in which they live, and they apply their engineering knowledge to make a difference. So in some of the developed countries, we have good road infrastructure. We have good healthcare systems. And this is what we call development, right? OK. On the other side, where you have a lot of problems, like we have in some parts here in Ghana, we have issues with sanitation. We have bad roads. We have poor medical systems, healthcare systems. We have all kinds of issues, then we consider ourselves underdeveloped. Isn't that the case? OK, so there is a correlation between what the engineers are doing in the society and what we see as development. There is a direct correlation. So why do we have the problems that we have here? Do we not produce enough engineers? Or if we do produce enough engineers, are they trained to be able to do what I said engineers do, which is to solve real life problems? These are the kinds of thoughts I have on a regular basis. So let's explore the numbers first. There are three main public universities producing engineers in Ghana. So we have University of Ghana, uh, KNUSD, I really should give respect to KNUSD, Kwame Nkrumah University of science and technology, they produce the most engineers. Between 2010 and 2013, on average, they produce 760 engineers, out of which 13% were female. University of Ghana is a new entrant and produces on average, in that time frame, produce on average 50 graduates, 20% female. There's also UMAT, Univ uh, University of Mines and Technology, which produce approximately 250 graduates per year during that period. Are these numbers sufficient? I don't know. And that is one of the problems. 
That is one of the problems. What kind of education did these engineers receive? Were they trained to be able to solve our problems or not? This is another question we need to ask. OK, so what exactly is the problem? And I, I don't presume to say all problems in our society come from the lack of engineering knowledge. I, I don't want to leave that impression at all. But the engineers have a major role to play in this. So what are we doing? Nationally, we are known to be a most risk-averse society. I'm sorry, Ghanaians. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. We have zero tolerance for failure. If you fail in an endeavor, consider yourself done. And so with this kind of attitude, we look for things that will work. Um, so we have no patience for experimentation. We have no patience for trying things out and then learning along the way so that we can get better, unfortunately. right? So what happens is, uh, nationally, we are interested in important solutions. And I have seen this for myself. I teach at the Department of Biomedical Engineering, University of Ghana. I have taken my students on field trips to hospitals where we have asked the questions. The medical devices you are using, if we were to produce some in Ghana right now, would you use them? And we've been told point blank, no. How can we know that they work? On the other hand, the ones we import always work for us, and we are OK with those, so that is what we will do. We've been told. We've been told. So nationally, we do not really encourage the kind of thinking, the kind of learning that an engineer who intends to solve problems is ready or needs to go through. <sighs> anyway, so that's not the end of the problem. There's little accountability and little knowledge, even among educators, of what is needed. I asked, what kind of engineers do we want? Nobody has told me, and I've been doing this. I've been teaching uh, engineering since 2004. Nobody has told me about the type of product I should produce and what would happen if I didn't. There is no accountability. How many am I supposed to produce? It doesn't look like we have decided on what we want. This doesn't help. All right, so the educational institutions themselves. When you enter one of our public engineering programs, departments, what you will see is a whole lot of students usually because we want to have improved access to education and our population is increasing. So we have large numbers of students, very few professors and lecturers. And they are trying to survive. The reward system does not favor training people to solve real life problems. In order for the professor to survive, they must publish. It doesn't matter what. This is what they have to do. And so they, they work to the kind of reward they can get. We have curricula that don't encourage exploration and problem solving. So I was just talking to some of my past students, and they told me they had, for example, a course they had to uh, memorize 40 equations. If you successfully do that, you will get your A and a beautiful certificate. OK? So this is the kind of situation we have. There is a lack of accountability. And we don't even have a clear idea what we are supposed to produce anyway. Then let's talk about the students, my pride and joy. <laughs> yes. I have had students who come to me asking, even before they enter university, if I came to your department and did engineering, how much would I earn? What job would I get? They are not thinking about creating jobs. No, it's not about creating jobs. It's not about solving any problem. It is about getting that certificate so that somebody would employ them. And can we blame them? This is how they've been trained. 
right from basic school. So there's basic school, there's junior high school, then senior high school before they come to us in their university. They have been programmed to respond to a reward system that rewards rote learning. They are the expert. We take the best. And the best means these are the people who can memorize the most. It is not at that stage that I'm going to ask someone to now start thinking differently, even though I do that and they don't like me very much when I do. <laughs> I have sent students off to go look for problems to solve and they've come back to tell me Ghana is calm. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they have been rewarded over their educational career by memorizing things and reproducing those things. And so it's not about problem solving to them. And so that switch is extremely difficult. We also have parents who push the young people in many different directions. They are, our parents are very well-meaning. But they are Ghanaians after all, with this risk-averse attitude. So go do a course that will get you a job at the end. Don't think about solving any problem. Get that certificate so you can get that job. So our best students are pushed to go to medical school. The next best will now think about engineering when they don't get into medical school, many of them. And then they come. So they have no true passion for engineering when they come. Our educational system is also structured in the way that if you don't do science, you are not eligible to even try engineering. So someone could have a passion for engineering, but because they chose the wrong subjects, they have no opportunity to come. We will pick the best students who know how to memorize over a student who actually knows how to do something. This is what we are running. OK, so the parents. The parents want to help. You know, They want to have a good place for their children. Unfortunately. Uh, many are suffering in silence. They do the wrong programs or they have no passion and they have no interest in solving any problem by the time they graduate. Yes, I have aired our dirty laundry. So what can we do about all of this? Let's now start exploring some of the steps we could take to change the story. And I would like to use my own experience as an example, a case study of what is possible. There are people doing different things. And I'm happy to say that every once in a while, I come across different programs that are promoting problem solving. And it makes me very, very happy to see that. I'm very excited to work with any groups that do these things. So what have we done to change some of these attitudes? So in my department, we have a program. Actually, this was a program that was developed in collaboration with colleagues from the University of Michigan. They bring their students from University of Michigan. We add our students from University of Ghana. And they go off to the hospitals to identify problems. They go usually to Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Sometimes they go to uh, Konfanochi Teaching Hospital or other hospitals. They identify problems. They come back, and their final year project, they attempt to use their engineering skills to address these problems. Amazing, right? OK, we've been doing this since 2010. And what do the University of Michigan students get out of this? They get an opportunity to work with students very much like them in the same year at university. And they get to understand the context of the problems they are coming to study here, because they interact with people like them, but who have the context, the Ghanaian context. So they benefit from this. Our students, uh -huh, that is where I have most interest. Our students get to see that they are studying similar things to what is being taught at University of Michigan. And they get to question why they study similar things, and yet their colleagues in Michigan are interested in innovating, coming up with medical devices, while they are interested in getting the certificate and going to sit in the hospital to fix 
ions. <laughs> so at least for this period, they see the possibility. We have had students do all sorts of things. So we have had, for the first time, you, students from Ghana going to international design competitions and getting into the finals. We have seen students who produce medical devices, prototypes. Many of them are sitting in my office, unfortunately. We need to make that bold step to move these projects forward. Mm. They produce prototypes. Undergraduate students are publishing in journals. We have one patent that has, we have applied for based on the work the students did. So it's not because we cannot be innovators, that we cannot design, that we cannot solve real life problems. There is something inherently wrong with the way we are treating our students and the lack of expectations that we have for them. So what do we do? Yeah, like I said, there are many groups doing different things. There's not everything based on what we have right now. It's not everything that can be done in the classroom setting. But we can partner with these NGOs, social entrepreneurs, all those people working in this space to create the practical opportunities that the student need to get the confidence to know that they can actually solve problems. We can work together. We can identify the gaps, the issues with the parents. How do we reach parents to make them understand that a student has a passion for something rather than the other and to encourage that passion so that they can apply themselves? These are things we can do together. Ah, uh, at the national level, can we for a moment put aside that import mentality and challenge some engineers to do something. They may not succeed at first because they are not used to doing it. Can we stick with them and allow them the space to develop the skills that are needed so that we can produce our own solutions? Is it possible to do some of these things? Can we focus more on practical training? Can we get our government to invest more so that we can offer practical training? to our students. Can we change the attitudes of the students so that they are not looking for a job? They are there to learn how to solve problems. Can we reward problem solving so that people would like to do that? Can we change our educational system in some way so that those who have the passion for engineering are the ones who get the opportunity to come and try this. I'm asking a lot of questions that require many bold steps. But I believe that it's possible to do it. It's possible to do it. So this is the story I came to tell about engineering education in Ghana. I didn't mention our regulatory bodies. Let's find out. There is no program in engineering education in Ghana at the moment. Let's start that. Let's get data to inform policy, to inform better teaching of engineering, and let's challenge our engineers. We can do better. Please take that bold step with me. Thank you for listening. <laughs>